ABC 10 News at 7 starts now. Businesses across our border region preparing for another tough month. Today, the Department of Homeland Security extended the border closure for another month. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. Non-essential travel to and from those countries is not allowed. Our ABC 10 News reporter Leah Pazzetti shows us why business owners disagree with what's considered essential. These restrictions are nothing new. DHS has extended these restrictions over and over. Take a look down below me. You can see all of these cars crossing the border right now are traveling for essential reasons. Those are the only people who can cross the border. This most recent extension announced today means restrictions will now continue on for one more month, citing the Delta variant as concern. For 16 months, the U.S.-Mexico border has been closed to non-essential travel, and that closure will continue for one more month, now through August 21st. All of us in, in the region and, and people who work um, on both sides of, of the border, we're hoping for a different outcome. Chicano Federation President and CEO Nancy Maldonado says this impacts businesses, economy, and people. It just makes a lot of people's lives a a lot more challenging. The Department of Homeland Security says those who can travel include U.S. citizens or permanent residents of the U.S., people traveling for medical reasons, for school or to work, people traveling for cross-border trade or official government travel, and military personnel. Maldonado says businesses along the border are some of the many impacted. This just continues to affect, unfortunately, small businesses that have already been so impacted, um, and it just it doesn't help our economy here locally. DHS says concerns over the spread of the Delta variant are prompting this closure. Maldonado says moving forward, their goal is to continue encouraging vaccinations, hopeful that more protection will speed up the reopening process. This has real life impacts on people's well-being, on their ability to travel, on their ability to see family, and their ability to do the things that they want to do every day. So it's not necessarily just every individual making a decision that's just going to affect them. These decisions affect a lot of people. This restriction is not just for us down south here at the U.S.-Mexico border, but it is also applicable up north at the Canadian border. Leah Pizzetti, ABC 10 News. A former Scripps Health employee has been charged with stealing the identity of dying patients in order to collect pandemic-related benefits. The government says that Matthew Lombardo was a patient financial service representative. Court documents say that Lombardo would access confidential patient health care information through his employer's information network and then distribute this information to three others. The document says in one text message, Lombardo sent others in the group a patient's name and personal information and then wrote, quote, this guy died a few hours ago. How many names do we need? I'll check for more, just got here. Scripps Health tells ABC 10 News Lombardo was terminated for cause and it's now cooperating with the investigation. The San Diego Convention Center is getting ready for its first big event in more than a year. Today, officials unveiled details for the first convention since restrictions were lifted. August 1st, a five-day business convention opens for professionals working in light-based technologies. Economists say that our area lost out on more than $2 billion in activity due to canceled conventions. The building instead housed a homeless shelter and then served as a shelter for minors who came across the border for asylum without parents. There are 30 conventions scheduled throughout the end of the year, including a special November version of Comic-Con. People are back in their homes after a bomb scare today in the North County. Construction crews in Oceanside uncovered an old military bomb. Sky 10, as you can see, was over the lot. This was on South Tremont Street just after 1 p.m. People were evacuated while Camp Pendleton sent a bomb squad to check out the shell and